Coming up in the news, a 73-year-old Bellingham man dies in a crash after his vehicle veered into a ditch and rolled onto its roof. The latest on the search for missing Australians from the New Zealand volcano tragedy. A new deal for Hobart's private hospital, but will it have an impact on our struggling health system? Also tonight, five Tasmanian Harris scarf stores face an uncertain future as the chain goes into receivership. Jetstar cancels more than 100 flights ahead of strike action from Friday and Ash Barty adds more silverware to her cabinet. For these stories and more, join the team right here at six. Crash in just over a week. The first Australians identified as victims in the New Zealand volcano disaster. Five Tasmanian stores on the chopping block as Harris Scarf goes under. The state's struggling health system under the microscope. The latest additions to Tasmania's summer firefighting fleet. And into the wild, the last stage of the Three Capes track opens up. Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. A 73-year-old Bellingham man has died after his car rolled multiple times before landing in a ditch in the state's north. The tragedy bringing traffic to a standstill for early morning commuters with police at a loss as to how the crash occurred. A Toyota Hilux now barely recognisable. The mangled wreckage, the result of a single vehicle crash near Rochalie. The vehicle has left the road on the left hand side and gone through a ditch. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. As we go to air tonight, an extraordinary plan is being put in place to reach New Zealand's White Island to retrieve the bodies of those left behind. It has now been confirmed six Australians have died, a further nine are still missing, presumed dead. 30 people remain in hospital. Well, this is the edge of the exclusion zone, five nautical miles from White Island, the closest anyone who is not involved in the retrieval mission can get. And we can now put names and faces to the first Australian victims of the tragedy. They include a couple from New South Wales and a mother and daughter from Queensland. Julie and Jessica Richards, as close as a mother and daughter can be. If there was an adventure that offered itself, then they would be the ones to do it. In Tauranga, New Zealand, Robert Ovadio, 7 News. Increased volcanic activity today has meant there's been no opportunity to retrieve the eight bodies. The delay is angering families and the local community, with some accusing police of dragging their feet. It's almost always a fond farewell. Not today. There are no words. In Tauranga, Chanel Vella, 7 News. There's trouble tonight for Harris Scarf and its Tasmanian stores, with the retailer descending into administration this afternoon. For more, our reporter Ruby Kermain joins us live. Ruby, good evening. Just what does it mean for our local staff and the stores? Joe, it's a whole lot of uncertainty for staff in the lead up to Christmas. There are five stores across Tasmania here in Hobart, Moona, Launceston, Devonport and Ulverston. The chain has 66 stores across the country and more than 1,800 staff. For now they're keeping their jobs and stores are still trading as administrators take over and look to sell the business. They've assured staff entitlements are safe and shoppers that gift vouchers and lay-by deposits will be honoured. But Joe, it's certainly a worrying sign for the retail sector. Yes, it certainly is. Thank you very much, Ruby. The state of Tasmania's struggling hospitals has been laid bare yet again, with new data revealing the true extent of the health crisis. It's been revealed one in 10 emergency department patients are left waiting almost 23 hours. But the minister's adamant change is on the way. The Health Minister touring our busy hospitals. So have you found it so far, you stay? Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. 
Police are still searching for a man who allegedly threatened staff at gunpoint at a New Norfolk petrol station last Friday. Authorities today released this CCTV footage taken at Mood Food around 2am during the incident. They're now seeking help from the public to identify one of the men dressed in dark clothing with a balaclava covering his face, also searching for a silver Toyota hatch. A second man, a 22-year-old from Herdsman's Cove, has already faced court over the alleged incident. A Newnham woman has pleaded guilty to all charges following a violent home invasion which hospitalised a 75-year-old man. Kylie Herlihy faced the Launceston Supreme Court today, charged with aggravated burglary, aggravated armed robbery and stealing following the break-in on Heather Street in May this year. The occupant suffered significant injuries to his head and ribs. She's been remanded in custody and will be sentenced next Tuesday. Firefighters are hopeful a 3,000 hectare blaze burning near Swansea will be extinguished by Christmas. It's just the latest bushfire to test the state's resources, with seven new aircrafts joining the fleet this summer. In the wilderness near Swansea, crews take a torch to the ground. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Federal Labor has slammed the Morrison government over its action on climate change. As a new report suggests, Australia ranks poorly on climate change policy. Anthony Albanese labelled the report embarrassing as he continues his tour through coal country without visiting a coal mine. Anthony Albanese says the government's climate policies are a hat full of hollow promises. Australia ranked last. Mark Riley, 7 News. Democrats are moving to impeach President Trump as soon as next week, unveiling their charges against him. Official articles of impeachment accuse Donald Trump of two crimes. Firstly, abuse of power, claiming he dangled a White House meeting and military aid to Ukraine in exchange for investigating a rival. And also obstruction of Congress, claiming he then blocked testimony from key officials. Do you believe that your impeachment is inevitable, sir? Well, I think the Democrats, I can't imagine they vote for it because we did nothing wrong. I think it's a disgrace that people can make impeachment out of nothing. It's only the fourth time articles of impeachment have been introduced in US history. Stay with us still to come in our broadcast tonight, the dangers of Antarctic aviation missions as a new operation takes off from Tasmania. The underwater find over a Bruny Island cable drama. And a deadly shootout that went for hours, caught on live television. Welcome back everyone. An anchor has been blamed for causing more than $2.5 million damage to a key energy supply cable to Bruny Island. The island's backup cable was damaged last month, divers finding it with an anchor hooked on. It will now take more than a year to replace with extra diesel generators set up at Alona ahead of the busy summer tourist season. Experts say there's no cause for concern but have reminded boaters to remain vigilant on the water. The Royal Australian Air Force has embarked on a heavy lifting operation from Tasmania to send vital new equipment to Antarctica. But the difficulty of polar aviation missions has been highlighted, with another country losing a plane with 38 people on board as it flew to the icy continent. A C-17 Globemaster at Hobart Airport being prepared for a flight to Antarctica. Actor Hugh Grant has weighed into the British election debate after Prime Minister Boris Johnson borrowed an idea from the hit movie Love Actually. The move hasn't helped him. A new poll shows his support crashing as the UK heads towards a hung parliament. Boris Johnson barging through. Tom Johnson will join us with a look at the day's sport news a little later in our bulletin. With worries for Pan Fi Pies fans as Taylor Adams is spotted in a moon boot. 
and Liverpool scores twice in two minutes to keep its Champions League dream alive. Those stories with Tom coming up shortly, but first after the break we'll have a look at the day's headlines. And then the Lunar Driver Program, keeping Tasmanians safe, reaches a milestone. And how video games could be the key for recovering stroke patients. Welcome back everyone, these are some of the stories making headlines tonight. A 73 year old Bellingham man killed in a crash, bringing the state's road toll to 31 this year. The first Australian victims identified in New Zealand's volcano tragedy. Five Tasmanian Harris scarf stores face an uncertain future as the chain goes into administration. And the Tasmania Fire Service adds seven new aircraft to its fleet. More than 900 Tasmanian children are set to receive some special gifts this Christmas thanks to the generosity of the community. Volunteers today started to pack up thousands of donated toys and books ready to be sent to those most in need across the state. Look, many of the families we work with are doing it a bit tough and Christmas is an especially difficult time. And some of the mums that we speak to and dads say that it makes a really big difference for them. It takes a lot of stress off their family. The Smith family is also aiming to raise around $4 million nationwide for the appeal. A driver safety program that began in Tasmania is today celebrating a major milestone. The Keys to Drive program has been running for 10 years and advocates say it's helping save young lives. When 16-year-old Caden Page passed his learner's test in August, he couldn't wait to get behind the wheel. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to Bank of Us, Tasmania's customer-owned bank. The Australian stock market has risen following a report that the US is planning to delay implementing new trade tariffs on China. The ASX 200 index rose 45.7 points. Short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 68.15 US cents and 51.85 Great British pence. Sport is next with Tom Johnson. Good evening, Tom. Some exciting news for motocross fans. Yeah, there is, Joe. We'll be crowning some national champions in Wynyan next year. We'll have some more details on that one next. Also coming up, another accolade caps off Ash Barty's Stella 2019. And we're all set to go for the much-hyped test against New Zealand. Welcome back everyone. Aussie cricket captain Tim Payne has shot down any talk of a rift with former skipper Steve Smith and Payne has a warning for his teammates on the eve of the first test against New Zealand. A trans-Tasman sporting rivalry based on camaraderie, both teams will wear black armbands for victims of the New Zealand volcano disaster. To AFL and Collingwood star Taylor Adams is facing an interrupted pre-season. The 26-year-old was spotted in a moon boot at training this morning. Collingwood was asked for an update on his condition, but the club declined to comment. Adams' manager says the boot moon boot is just precautionary. Those who were out on the track had some extra coaching from ex-pire Travis Cloak, who worked with the club's forwards. Aussie Mark Leishman will face off against Tiger Woods in tomorrow's opening round four ball at the President's Cup. But Woods is set to play just a minor role in America's star-studded team. Everywhere Tiger goes, oh, Tiger! the crowd follows. And For the first time, Tasmania will host the final rounds of the Australian Off-Road Championship. Rounds 11 and 12 of next year's series will take place in Wynyard, meaning multiple national champions will be crowned in the state. The AORC says Northwest Coast rider Matt Phillips has been instrumental in securing the titles for Tasmania. More than 200 riders are expected to race in the Tasmanian leg in mid-October. And that's fantastic news, Joe. A lot of riders up on the coast uh, participate in that competition so it would be great for them to have a chance to do it in their own backyard. Oh, and for all of us to witness it, that's for sure. Thanks so much for that, Tom. Murph joins us right after the break with a look at the day's weather.
Good evening, a mostly cloudy day today with temperatures within a couple of degrees of average. Hobart 22, Launceston 21, Burnie 20, Devonport 18, Campania the high with 24 after Lyawini and Butler's Gorge posted the low of 1. St Helens 23 degrees, Friendly Beaches and Ooze 22, Grove got to 21, Lowhead and Flinders Island 18 and Strawn 17. We had patchy low and high cloud over us today, just a few light showers over the west, the northeast a bit clearer than most. A series of weak fronts produced a fair bit of cloud south of the mainland. Thunderstorm clouds are over northeast New South Wales and southeast Queensland. Central areas of WA and also the Territory. A low has cloud off the coast and the, over the Coral Sea off Queensland. Tomorrow a cold front over our region and a high over the Northern Bight produce a west to southwest airstream over Tasmania. A large low lies off the north of the nation. Winds at 20 to 25 knots reaching 30 knots over the northeast and south and then tending southerly over the east in the afternoon. A strong wind warning has been issued between Stanley and St Helens Point and also for waters between Wineglass Bay and Low Rocky Point. 18 the high for Hobart with a shower or two clearing tomorrow. Same for Signet with 17 degrees and 18 for New Norfolk. Launceston tomorrow a high of 22, partly cloudy. Devonport up to 20 and Campbelltown the same, bit of cloud in the air. Burnie. Partly cloudy and 19, 16 for Strawn with a shower or two easing, Smithton 17 degrees. 22 for St Helens with an afternoon shower, partly cloudy for Swansea, Fingal similar and both on 21. UV very high across the state. On Friday fine and partly cloudy except for showers increasing to rain in the west. Early showers on Saturday over the west and south easing as light showers develop over the east afterwards and on Sunday showers predicted again not so much over the north and east. They better stock the beverage stalls at the cricket tomorrow, 39 in Perth, sunny in Adelaide, a cloudy 19 in Melbourne, Sydney, a possible shower or storm in Brisbane and Darwin. Cloudy in Hobart, 17 right now, 18 in Launceston, bit of cloud about, same for Devonport, but 16 degrees. Joe, that's the way it's all is at the moment on the weather front. All right, thank you very much for that, Murph, and that's all from the team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a little later. Bye.